Guilt is an emotion that is helpful when it shows up after we've done something wrong, hurtful, or harmful. Guilt is there as kind of this guidepost to remind us that that wasn't okay and we shouldn't be doing things like that. And so we want to learn from that and not repeat that. And that uncomfortable feeling of guilt is there to help us with that process of not wanting to repeat those things that, like I said, are hurtful or harmful. That is when guilt is adaptive. Guilt is helpful. Guilt is useful. Guilt is not helpful when we use it against ourselves to make ourselves feel bad when we haven't done something wrong. But many of us do this. We feel bad. We feel guilty. We feel bad about things that do not connotate, do not require guilt, where guilt is not an appropriate feeling. So today I want to talk to you about things that many of us feel guilty about that are not appropriate things to feel guilty about. And we're going to talk about what to do instead. Are you curious? You should be because there are a lot of things that you are feeling guilty about. And we're going to cover at least some of them today that you do not need to be making yourself feel guilty about. If you're new here. Welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you are back again, it is always good to have you. If you are a shifter, say hello. Always good to have my shifters here. And if you don't know, shifters are the members of my membership community, the Shift Society, where we are taking this work to a deeper level. You're being coached and supported and giving a step-by-step process to learn the scientific way to manage your mind and emotions, no matter whoever or whatever is happening around you guide you through, I guide you in there through a five-step process that is going to teach you how to work with your brain, no matter whoever or whatever is going on, so that you can be in charge of your mind and emotions instead of letting them control and dictate you. Get more information about the Shift Society in the description below. Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And feeling guilty is something that can really hold us back. And it might even, you might even notice it's holding you back, feeling guilty for so many things. It can be actually pretty debilitating and it can stop you from showing up in your life the way that you want to because you are so consumed with these feelings of guilt. You can be so scared of doing something wrong or making a mistake or, you know, disappointing someone or not fulfilling some kind of expectation. So let's get into this and let's talk about the first thing that you do not need to feel guilty for is not being perfect or having it together all the time. How many times have you apologized for your house not being perfectly cleaned and organized when you've had people over? How many times have you apologized for not looking all completely together when you run into someone, a friend or a neighbor at the grocery store? How many times have you said sorry for not having your emotions all perfectly in line, for not always feeling great, always being happy, for feeling sad sometimes? Oh, I'm sorry that, you know, I'm feeling so sad today, or I'm sorry that I'm not as positive as I usually am, or I'm sorry that I, I've been a bit of a downer, right? How many times have you apologize for not having things perfect on the outside or perfect on the inside? That is not something you are doing wrong. It does not require an apology. Thinking about how much it would take for you to have everything perfect, everything put together, everything clean and polished and, and you know, up to snuff every single moment. What would that, how much every energy would that take? Would you have time for anything else? You'd probably be running around as an anxious, stressed out, overwhelmed mess, which then you'd probably apologize for that. <laughs> But thinking about that, you don't need to apologize. We're all human. None of us has it all together. None of us looks all together. None of us has it all figured out. None of us feels perfect all the time. That's nothing to apologize for. We're all human beings. We've all got our, you know, we've all got our disorganization and our, and our messes and our stuff. We've all got it. And it's not something that requires an apology or anything that you need to feel guilty for. It's just part of being human for all of us. 
The next thing that you do not need to feel guilty for is asking for help. Now, some among you might be really good at asking for help. You're like, I'm okay with asking for help. And you know, I'm totally fine with that. And that's, that's okay with me. But some of you might be like, no, I know. And I know I've had conversations with so many people about this, friends and clients and even group members in the shift society who have talked about, like, I don't know why I have such a problem asking for help. Um, you know, I just feel guilty. I feel bad. I don't want to put people out. I don't want to make people, you know, inconvenience them in any way. I don't want to have to put them in a position that's awkward where they're going to have to say no, right? Instead of just being like, how about just realize that there's like, what, 8 billion of us on the planet here? Because we were never meant to do it alone. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say, you know, I need a hand. It's okay to say, I'm struggling right now. And you know, do you have time to talk? Or I've got a really crazy work schedule this week and I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Can you pick my kids up from school? And then like, I'm happy, you know, pick my kids up and take them home for a couple hours after school because I can't, I'm going to be running late and then I'll do it for you next week, right? It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to reach out. And yeah, there are going to be times when people aren't able to, when people have to say no, when people are not available for what we may want them for in that moment. And that's okay. This is why we need support networks instead of just one kind of person that we always go to because we actually don't want to burn them out. And because not everyone, that person is likely not going to be available all the time because people have their own lives and they have their own things going on. They have their own limits. And so acknowledging that right? Some people might say, no, this is why we need a support network. So we can go to a few people and just be able to not take it personally or feel bad or sad or rejected. If someone does say no, just be like, yeah, I get it. You know, you got a life too. And you're not always going to be at my disposal for whatever I need in any particular moment. So then we go to the next person, ask for help. It's okay. And the truth is a lot of people like to help. A lot of people like to give. We are relational beings who, who in many times feel good when we feel needed, when we feel essential to someone, when we feel like we're able to give someone something, it feels good for us. So let people give to you. It feels good for them. It's helpful for you. And if they're not available for that particular thing, don't take it personally and just move on and ask someone else, which goes to our next point about things that you don't need to feel guilty for. You don't need to feel guilty about saying no. If someone asks something of you, you don't need to feel guilty if you have another commitment, if you have something else that you need to be doing at that time, that you are at your mental or emotional limit and can't take anything else on, if you are feeling exhausted or worn out and just need some quiet moments to yourself and you need to say no to that, you do not need to feel guilty. It is not wrong to have limits, to have other plans, to have preferences about how you want to spend your time. If that is your time that you wanted to sit and twiddle your thumbs because you've been so busy and you just need a moment to breathe and be and twiddle. (laughs) You don't need to feel guilty about that. That's not wrong. That's not bad. And if you struggle with saying no, because that feels hard to come out of your mouth, then I have a list for you. It's called 25 ways to say no that are clear, but kind. If no is something that you do struggle with, you don't know how to say it in a way that's not going to sound like harsh or rude or whatever that is. If you struggle with that, they're clear and kind ways to say no. 25 of them in a free download that you can get. It's in the description. There's a link there, hit that. And then you'll get um, prompted through how to get access to it. It's completely free. Another thing that you do not need to feel guilty for is being successful. Now I know many among you are doing this and probably more so stereotypically women, people socialized as women struggle with being okay with letting themselves be successful, right? We struggle with owning the fruits of our labor from being able to say, yeah, I worked really hard and I got these results and these results are great and I'm really grateful and I'm really proud of myself. You don't need to feel guilty about it. 
You don't need to feel bad about it. And how many of you do where you're like, you downplay stuff. And I mean, it's okay to be humble and not be like, I'm so great. I'm so awesome. But if that's your thing and you're like, I want to just say I'm so great and I'm so awesome. Yeah, you are. And you go for it and you do that. And if that feels good for you, that amazing. But for some, it might not feel as comfortable to do that. But I also don't want you to downplay it to the point of self-deprecation. You can be humble, but you don't have to throw yourself under the bus and be like, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, anyone could have done it. Oh, you know, it was, I just got lucky. Like, you don't need to downplay it. Be able to say like, yeah, I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, I worked really hard at this. Yeah, you know, I, I put a lot into this and I'm really proud of myself. and I'm really happy with the results and I'm feeling, yeah, I just, I'm really, I, it's great. I'm being really grateful and um, I'm doing well and I'm, and I'm feeling good about that. There are going to be some people that are going to criticize you, that are going to try to kind of call you down, maybe make fun of you, maybe try to, you know, subtle ways to kind of like cut you off at the knees and make you feel bad or make you feel like you're getting too big for your britches or whatever that is. There are going to be people that are going to do that, but I'm almost going to guarantee that the only people who are criticizing you, judging you or condemning you from pursuing your dreams, for going for the things that are important to you, are the people who are struggling with the courage to go for their own, to pursue their own, to build their own, to create their own. Because other people who are in it, who are doing it, who are fulfilling it, who are going for it, most of those people want to support you want to be proud of you, want to raise you up because they're like, hey, here's someone else who is creating a life that they want for themselves, who are going for the things that are important to them, for who are showing up in life big and, 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 and without apology. And it doesn't even have to be big, but showing up in your life without apology, without feeling guilty about whatever it is that is important to you, however you define success. You don't have to feel guilty about that. Another thing that you do not need to feel guilty for is taking some distance from people who you may not have the emotional capacity for right now. I've had a lot of people come to me and talk about this and be like, you know, I have this friend who is going through a lot, who needs to talk a lot, who, you know, whenever we talk, they vent, they complain, they are struggling. And like, fair enough, they've got a lot of stuff going on. They're going through a really hard time, but so am I. And I've got some things in my life that I'm really struggling with. And I'm just sort of trying to keep my own head above water. I don't have the strength to also help keep theirs. And that's okay. It's okay to take some dif distance and be like, you know what? Like, I know that you're struggling right now and I am too. And, you know, neither of us have a lot to give right now. And so I just can't. I don't have a lot to give. I don't have a lot of capacity. I don't have any extra. And to not feel guilty about that. We don't need to feel guilty about not having extra for someone else who may need it. Right? Just because they need it, it doesn't mean that we have to be the ones to give it. Great if you do. And there will be times in your life where you're like, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Things are kind of pretty stable in my life. I'm feeling pretty stable. I'm feeling pretty strong. I have some more to give. I can be there for someone. I can be a support. I can give more than they are able to give at this point. I can be a giver right now and, you know, I, um, I don't need to take very much because I've got, I've got other relationships where I'm getting support. I've got other people that, you know, I'm able to like, you know, are able to be there for me. I'm able to kind of, you know, bounce things off of or talk to or get support from like, I've got that so I can give more to this person. And then there might be times in your life where you're like, you know what, I need to take a little bit more. Just make sure, and this is just a little bit of a side note here, just try to make sure that you're not always taking Right. And if you are going through a hard time, make sure that you are kind of spreading yourself out between a few support people. And then when you are feeling good, when you are having sometimes a feeling a little bit better, you know, show up for them, be there for them, ask them how they're doing, truly listen to that. Because that is an important part of a relationship too. A relationship is a two-way street. Now, it doesn't mean it has to be 50-50 all the time. There's might be some times where you need 80 
right? And that person, you know, you need you need 80%. You need 80% of the support and the other person doesn't. They're doing good. They may only need 20, but they still need that 20. They still need something. They still need to feel valued in the relationship. They still need to feel seen and heard in the relationship. So make sure that you are not always taking, even if you're going through a hard time. And the other part of it is too, even if you're going through a hard time, it still feels good to be able to give, to be able to give something to someone else. And it can help kind of take our minds off our own stuff as well to try and be there for somebody else and have both of that. And the other point is that if you are finding that you are always giving, that's enough of that. If you are finding that you're always giving, you're exhausted, you're starting to get resentful, you get, you're overwhelmed, it's time to start asking for some support. It's time to start getting and receiving as well. Some of you really struggle, like we talked about, you know, earlier in this talk about asking for help. Some of you really struggle with asking for help and it shows <laughs> because you're overwhelmed, you're stressed, maybe even a little bit resentful. You're exhausted. Allow yourself to receive and give in your relationships. And you don't need to feel guilty if you need to take some distance when you need 80% and the person that you are friends with needs 80%. It's okay to take some distance and be like, you know what? I don't have 80% to give. So I need to take a step back and maybe I can give 20% um, to this relationship, but I can't give 80%. So I need to take a step back and just allow myself to give that 20% and not feel guilty about that. The next thing that you do not need to feel guilty for is protecting your joy. Not engaging in conversations or in situations that are going to, you know, are going to trigger you, are going to get you worked up, are going to get you really upset, are going to throw you off. Now, I'm not saying it's good for us to ever avoid anything uncomfortable in our lives. We do need to face some uncomfortable things and comfortable conversations. We need to deal with some things in our lives that aren't always pleasant because that's just part of life, right? It can't be all sunshine, roses, rainbows, and unicorns. We sometimes need to deal with things that are hard that are going to be challenging for us also because we grow when we are challenged and when we are stretched, but we also need to do a better job for many of us of protecting our joy, being able to say like, I'm not going to engage in this conversation. If this person starts like asking me questions about a contentious issue like religion or politics or, you know, I don't even know what it is, whatever this a contentious issue is about parenting styles, <laughs> which can you know, be a pretty heated one for a lot of people. It's like, you know, what? I don't think that this conversation is going to go anywhere helpful. I'm going to get worked up. They're going to get worked up. You know, I'm going to, you know, probably spend the rest of the, the afternoon kind of ruminating and like going over the conversation in my head. I'm going to probably say some things that I regret and then I'm going to feel bad about that. It's just going to be a whole thing. No, not doing it, not engaging with it. And very interesting. I was out with some family the other night and they started discussing a fairly sort of heated issue. And I noticed myself listening to the conversation and hearing some things come out of their mouth that I was like, ah, mm, oh, that is really hard for me to hear. And I feel myself getting triggered and I want to kind of set the record straight or I, you know, just want to like challenge them on that. And I want to like, you know, get into it. But I was like, you know what? No, mm -mm, mm -mm. We've had these conversations before. I've had these conversations with these, with, these, with these family members. It doesn't go anywhere good. It's not helpful. It doesn't do anything positive. It usually just ends up getting conflict and getting, you know, um, upset and just sort of getting frustrated. And it's just, no, I'm protecting my joy right now. And I'm just going to take a deep breath and hopefully just work on sort of moving the conversation to another topic, just sort of massage the conversation into another topic because I am going to protect my joy right now. So really thinking about that. What things are you letting steal your joy? 
Are you getting into situations, into conversations? Are you letting yourself get worked up about things that do not need to get worked up about? Do you, are you putting yourself in situations or conversations that you know are just gonna get you frustrated, angry, upset, that are unnecessary? And sometimes we have to have hard conversations. I'm not talking about those, but the unnecessary ones. Protect your joy and don't feel guilty about it. Don't feel guilty about not engaging or participating in something that you know is not going anywhere helpful. If guilt is something that you struggle with in any area of your life, whether it's guilt about, you know, what you're doing or not doing as a parent, as a partner, as a child, as an adult child of you have, you know, feel guilty about things with your mother or your father-in-law or your sister. You know, guilt is just a feeling that you are way too familiar with and you're like, oh, this sucks. Then make sure that you get my book, Drive Your Own Darn Bus. We have a whole section there on guilt. I've gotten great feedback about that where people are like, you know, you really opened my eyes to guilt, to understanding it better and really taught me how to not feel guilty, not be caught under that spiral and that cycle of guilt. And so that chapter, or that sorry, it's more than a chapter, it's a whole section on guilt that um, is in there that teaches you what guilt really is, why we have it, and what to do about it when it shows up in a bunch of different situations. In my book, Drive Your Own Darn Bus, it is on sale now at every major book re retailer and Amazon worldwide. So wherever you are, um, go to Amazon, type in drive your own darn bus, it'll show up, you can get it there. And then also make sure you get that free download, 25 ways to say no. Ask yourself, is this thing that I'm feeling guilty about something that I've actually done wrong that would be appropriate to feel guilty about? Or is this just a pattern that I've gotten myself into that is not necessary, doesn't need to be there? And am I going to commit to not feeling guilty about things that do not require guilt? <laughs> Always good to have you here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Grab my book, Drive Your Own Darn Bus. Get that free download, 25 Ways to Say No. And take good care of yourself. Take good care of those around you. See you again soon. Bye for now.